Cincinnati, we gon' rise and up. In the jungle, we unite and up. Trippin' on your black and white. Full day when we fight, live and die in these stripes. Uh. Now who got a move rockin' on? Now who wanna move crossin' on? Now who wanna move out on? If you got stripes, then you let the city know you rock them. There we go. Welcome to an eclipse. Oh God, I don't have my glasses. Oh, I'll no. Put your glasses on. You burn your eyes out. I always there, there you go. I have glasses on now, so right. I'm safe. I my glasses are dark though. I where the fuck is everybody? It's hard to see. You're actually standing up, and you don't have pants on. Oh shit! Let me get my pants on real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. So, hey, uh, I did go out there and stare at the sun, though, man. So, like, I can't see directly in front of me. There's this big spot. Um, but I can see around the edges. That, so I got to look kind of like this. Now, I, Oh, look at you, Greg. Now I see you. Now I don't. Well, that was something. Were you guys uh, blown away? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Life, oh, life changing, life altering. man. Yeah. Yeah. Life altering. I'll be able to tell. I can't wait to tell my grandchildren all about the uh, the uh, solar eclipse that I saw back in 2024. Yeah, it was so good. That's how your grandpa's eyes got burnt out, and he couldn't work anymore. And we went in the fucking poor house, and and there's that. But you could have glaucoma, even though weed's gonna be legalized. But I'm just saying. Well, there you, you go. Want, if you want to partake, you could use that as a uh, but, but solar eclipse. At that point, it'd be medical out. anyway, right? And if I'm on disability, I don't have to worry about it, man. They don't test you on disability. It's true. You I know that because I get want. a lot of patients on disability. And they, 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 good thing they don't test them. <laughs> you know. You already know. Yeah. You won't lose your disability check. But... You know I will never lose, never lose my faith of heading down to Midwest Best Barbecue and 50 West Beer, proud sponsors of this show today. You can, and it's a great place to watch the eclipse from either restaurant too. Yeah, in the year 3000 when it's back. Yep. Make sure you're there. They just said their 11th uh, anniversary, so yep. they'll be around in the year 3002. That meat's got not going anywhere. I took my mom up there yesterday. We went and got our taxes done. And then I told my mom, I said, you want to eat something for lunch? She said, yeah. And I said, well, what do you want? She's like, I don't care. You pick. And I said, fucking Midwest best, mom. Let's go. I said, yes, it's out of the way. But they got the best chicken wings you've ever had in your life. And I took her there, and she got the same order I got. We got G-Funk wings. We got that mac and cheese. Even my mom ate the mac and cheese. And she said, oh, it's good. I said, I told you, mom, don't want you to be offended. Don't kick me under the table. This is the best mac and cheese I ever ate. And she agreed with me. She agreed with me. And I told her. And she agreed with me, so I'm, I'm in the clear. Did you see Tim and Nicole there? Nope, they weren't there. Yeah. They were not there. They were sleeping. They Oh, they family day. Oh, Sunday that's right. family day. That's right. So there was none of their kids were up there. Yeah. And they were How does Greg there. not know that? I know. Greg, you were with Greg. them, probably. Yeah, you were part of the family. You were probably with them on family day. If it's family day, I'm sure you're there. Yeah, no, no. I, I was there on a Sunday one time meeting James and his family one time. And then, no, no, Nicole, Tim and Nicole were there, but they were leaving to go somewhere with their family, I think. With their family. And they said, mm -hmm. hey, it's family day, Greg, come on. And then you guys went down to Whitten Woods and you rode the uh, you rode the paddle boats, remember? Yeah, what, Darth, like just from a day or two ago? Yeah, I was going to say, let's try to guess how long it was since Darth's been there. I'm going to go yeah, Darth, four, Darth, days. I four days. Darth. Four days. I told Darth, Darth, you're aggravating the hell out of me, man, by trying to I beat know. me in the Midwest. But, he, but he's like, well, Greg, that's because work is right down the street from me. So, Darth, man, you know, you're trying to catch up to me, buddy. But Listen, I don't want to hear it, Greg, because I, I literally sent you a message on purpose while I was driving that I was going there so you could meet us up there. You're like, that sounds good, buddy, but I can't make it today. So you had a shot to meet me and my mom at Midwest. I was taking a walk. You could have walked your ass up there to Midwest Best. You know, they got sidewalks up there. I was that there. Is true. There, is a, no, there, is, there is a bike trail near Midwest Best. I literally had trail. to walk from Big Fancy inside. It was walking. I would have loved to have met Mama Chop. I, no, I, I, would love, I would have loved to meet your mom. Yeah. All right, Greg. You want to talk running backs? So we should probably get into it. Yeah. Let's do this. Dustin here says, real talk. I don't want to uh, really use 
any of the first four round picks on a running back. Fifth I round, not the earliest, as we have so many needs. I think it'll be interesting, right? I'm not sure where we'll go with this because we do have Zach Moss, Chase Brown. You're wanting to get him more carries. They brought back mm-hmm. Travion. Chris Evans is technically still on the roster. He, he's not going anywhere, as far as I know. So they have. They'll you know, probably those, use him on draft day to move up in round one. Well, he'll be getting carries in the preseason as long as yeah. that, cause that's a yearly tradition at this right. point. Right. He'll look good. He'll he'll be exciting in the preseason too. Exactly. Yeah, and most yeah, of the running backs that I really take took a look at are the earliest they could go is maybe fourth round. I like Benson. I didn't even look at him because I'm like, we're not gonna get a running back in the second round or anything. Like after Benson and the guy from Texas, I those are the ones that I was really, really scouting. Yeah, but I'll start with those two just because yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two highest I have ranked, and I do think both of them could come off the board in the second round or early third. And I don't think we're going that high, right? If we take one, no. I'm thinking the highest we would take one is pick 97 with that comp pick, and maybe yes. that opens up to taking one. But it's just going to depend. Maybe that's a good spot for a tight end. Maybe you've already taken a receiver. An interior offensive lineman sounds pretty good. Maybe you're doubling up a defensive tackle by pick 97, trying to you know get a McKinley Jackson after Tavondre Sweat news dropped yesterday. For anybody that might have missed that. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, DWI, you know, less than three weeks before the draft. So, and I guess it came out that that was something he had already been answering. It, yeah. Like, he is a known partier at, during his time at Texas and college, as I'm sure a lot of players are. I'm not going to bury him for that. Yeah. But at the same point of, in time, if you're having to go on visits and answer these questions day after day and you decide, Hey, I'm going to just go ahead and, and get drunk yeah. and drive my vehicle around here in Texas, that's, that's not ideal. Um, Especially these days, man, where Uber is so prevalent. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or Lyft. Come on, man. And I mean, you've got so much on the line. It just it shows complete lack of judgment. Exactly. And there was already concerns with his weight. So, you know, to to at least mention, I I mean, to me, you know, I had him as kind of you know mid to late second round guy. And sometimes I'm like, I could see him falling into the third just if teams aren't comfortable with the weight and him being able to maintain it like him not weighing in at the senior bowl. And then, you know, I've heard other people that are, you know, draft scout guys that are more well-known talk about just, uh, you know, him ideally would be 350. And the fact that he's been 366 and then another time he was at his pro day, he's 367. So. Pam, how you doing? So all, all of that stuff just, I mean, it's just really, not ideal for Sweat, and some teams I'm sure will have them off the board. Yeah. I can't answer if the Bengals will have them off the board or not, but they, they usually talk about character a lot, so doing this and already having some other concerns related to it, he could be off the board, or maybe he's a day three guy at this point. Um, I think the earliest, like if I drop him in my rankings, it's, and I'm going to, I mean, you have to at this point. Right. Uh, it's He's going to be at least like late third, basically fourth round, just on the board and that's my board. I'm not running an organization. Yeah. No. You know, I would have to think long and hard if I was chop about keeping on my big board at all. I know. I mean, you really would. What percent? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like the Bengals are going to be out on them because these past few years, they, you know, their draft picks are team captains, team leaders, guys with good uh, morals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Going to be good in the locker room. So, I don't think that the Bengals are going to be in on him. That being said, I will not be surprised this man still goes in the second round because he is the one pure nose tackle that's in this draft. And I don't know. It would surprise me at this point. It would surprise me. And if Marvin Lewis was our coach still, we'd take him at fucking 18. Yeah. And some people are like, well, we we took Mixon in the second. We we traded down, accumulated more picks. And Mixon's incident was from his freshman year in Mm -hmm. college where, you know, he had you had hoped at least and done your due diligence that he had matured as a human. It's it's kind of hard for Sweat, who's going to be turning twenty three years old, to to use the excuse of oh, I'm just a young kid when I did this. No, you just did it three you know less than three weeks before the biggest you know couple days of your life with the draft right. coming up. So I, I don't want to crucify the kid because hey, we right. all make mistakes, right? Things like that. I'm just strictly talking at you know a team standpoint, a draft. Uh, position standpoint you know i'm not trying to to crucify the kid the person you know maybe he's a good person that made a mistake and this never happens again and he has yeah. a 
long, great career. But I just, you know, talking as a, about it as like a person who follows the draft and the Bengals, obviously, I could see him being off their board. Or I think the earliest man is that pick 97. Yeah. And even then, I'd be surprised if they took him that hot. No, I'd be upset about it at 97. I'm not going to be upset because they're going to have more information on him. They've already mm-hmm. had him in for a visit. This happened after the visit. So, I, you know, I'm sure all teams and his agent's going to be trying to talk to all teams and this and that. And, you know, maybe they're allowed to make phone calls. I don't know how all that works, but I, I'm not going to be personally upset because I don't, you know, I don't know everything. And, you know, we'll just see what happens. But it doesn't seem like a Bengals pick at the moment. I agree with Darth here, though, because um, uh, Trent Brown has also some character issues, and we did well, take Car- him. I think he's talking about Carmen. Yeah, Carmen. Oh, Jackson Carmen. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. no, Carmen had the alleged incident with an under. Didn't that girl. come up after we got him, though? I thought I for some reason I didn't know about were, it. It didn't come out publicly, but I think it was kind of talked about like teams already knew that this was something floating out there. Yeah. And that's. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for us to say one way or the other, right? Uh, what happened there? But yeah, yeah. But I mean, so like, what are the chances if you're a betting man, Dale? What are the what do you think he gets drafted day three? Do you think he even gets drafted day two now? I think he's he's day three. I do think he gets drafted. I don't think he goes well, undrafted. Um, yeah. But I I do. I think maybe he goes fourth round. You know? Yeah. In yeah. general. Uh, so I'm okay if we get him in the fourth round. Like I'm okay with it too. But like you better. said, you look at Tier Tart. We, we, we had our chance to sign him, and character issues are right there, you know. But I don't – you know, there's certain types of character issues, you know. I don't know. You know, it, it, like it, it, it'll just show you, you know, with the, if it's the fourth or fifth round, I mean, why not, you know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they just have to feel comfortable, right? That's right. about all, all I want to say else about that. I just wanted to at least talk about it, discuss yeah. it. I do think it drops him from wherever teams were going to take him. We don't know oh, that yeah. for sure, right? Right. Teams might already add him as a third or fourth yep. round pick because they were worried about other issues. You know, some right. team might be things. salivating in the third round that he's still there and grab him. And that too, somebody might have had a first round grade on yep. him and says, "Well, if he's there in the third with my first round grade, I trust the kid's gonna not make a mistake like this again." They take him. I'm just gonna leave it at that, right? Because I don't want to. Who the hell am I, as I sit here and drink my Miller Lite, to judge some some you know young kid? for, you know, making a a huge mistake, obviously. But, you know, just it is something that I wanted to talk about because it's draft-related and Bengals-related. Definitely. Yeah. So, but back to running backs. Trey Benson probably probably going – I think he has a chance to go second round. If not, maybe none Maybe none go second round. I think there's such a cluster of, like, the top ten guys that I could see teams just kind of waiting and waiting and being like, you know, I'm good if I get any of these ten to twelve players. So, th- so that could push down. I don't see anybody in the first for sure. Though. You know, last year we thought only one in the first and two went in the first, though. I mean, in the one, we weren't even sure if Bijan was going to go in the first, and Jameer right. Gibbs and Bijan both went in the first yeah. round. Well, I mean, at least we personally thought Bijan was that talented that you would take him, and we did talk about Gibbs, too, so. Yeah, I didn't think he was going twelfth overall. I'll say no. Who day Joe was on the Gibbs train? Oh, he was. Who Joe there. was no? I, he was shoveling coal into that bitch, man. Hey, I can't blame a man. He hey, looked at what happened. Him. Guy turned out great. Yeah. No, and, and and Robert, I understand, and I'm sure a lot of, and you know, there's a big part of me that feels that way with, uh, oh, yeah. you know, the job I have and, and things like that, and you definitely, you know, you you don't want to run someone's career for for a mistake and you hope they learn from it, but being this close to the draft and, and, and all the other things considering that was being said about him, it's, it's going to hurt his, his draft stock. It I'm is. sure that the guy that's hardest on him right now is himself. I mean, yeah. he, he knows it's about draft time. He's less than a month away from draft and he just knocked himself right out of that fucking second round. Most likely. Yeah. And I'll bet you he was going to go second round previous to that no. DUI. He could have got I and I I wouldn't have complained if we took him in the second round. Honest. Nope. Matter of fact, a lot of times when I did mock drafts and he was there in the second round, especially if I got Johnny Newton or, or Byron Murphy in the first round and he was there second round, I was thinking about that D line. I was thinking, oh my God. Yes, buddy. Yeah. And maybe he still ends up on the Bengals. And maybe somebody, like you said, Chop still takes him in the second round. Yeah. I just I think it's gonna hurt wherever somebody planned on taking him, they will probably take him later. 
I mean, that's just my opinion. This is what but, I'm talking about right here. I already before. said that, Darth. If Marvin was our coach, we oh yeah, he's he's with the Raiders, so he would he would have made the Raider. Who you knows? But no, I'm. Yeah, go ahead. Raiders need a quarterback though, so they may be using uh, some draft. Uh, capital to move up for a Michael Penix or a quarterback like that in this draft, it wouldn't surprise me early. Or the if they used enough picks to jump up and get Jaden Daniels, because is the, the Raiders coach didn't he work for Arizona and draft? He, he, Arizona he State recruited. Yeah, he recruited Jaden Daniels. Yeah, so, and, and Marvin was there at Arizona State for a while too under Herm Edwards. A lot of lot of connections, but man, it would take a lot of good trades to get up to grab yeah. Jaden Daniels at that spot. Yeah, you know, the Vikings. Well, plus, I was just going to say, plus you have Minnesota and Denver with, mm -hmm. that are higher than, than they am right now that will also be looking to trade up for quarterbacks. Yeah. Speaking of Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, we're, are you going <laughs> to talk about, about Justin I, Jefferson? I promise. I we promise. We don't talk about Justin Jefferson anymore. I promise. I promise. If it happens, we'll spend the whole episode or more talking about it, Greg. I no, promise. No, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. Let's we're, it'll right just now. be a yeah. uh, Bengals and Bruce show with uh, Greg masturbating. Oh, no. I'm going I'm going to pump out, I'm going to pay court stay running around with a cape and everything. See, But I don't want to lose my season ticket, though. You'll be doing we'll the dot bot on your balloon knot. Yeah. Okay. But let's go to the running backs, though, man. Because I, I, I didn't put a running back. But yeah, I think Benson's good at everything. Reliable hands. Yeah. He ran like a four three nine at the combine. Uh, he's he's good. I, his lateral agility is a bit concerning. Like I tried to go back and watch these guys again um, recently, just since you wanted to talk about it. Try to at least the top ten or so, at least you know, refresh my memory on all of them tape wise. Um, he does have a bit of an injury history. I think it was more high school, and he transferred from Oregon. But he's been pretty good the last two years. I mean, 990 yards and 906 this year. Played both full seasons. So, I mean, he seems to be healthy. He had a good combine. His RAS scored 9.70. Uh, I just think he's reliable and dependable right now. Now I'll shift right into Jonathan Brooks, who honestly, just tape-wise, I would probably put over Trey Benson just from the tape from last year but he ended up tearing his ACL late in the season. So that's basically the only reason. I don't know. Will he be ready for training camp? Will he miss some games? Will he be the same player early in the season as he's coming off that injury? Those are all things that are just unknown. So if you got two players close, you're going to go with the one who's been healthier more recently than the guy coming off the ACL, in my opinion. So that's why I have Benson over Brooks, but I think they're both, you know, yeah. mid to late second round guys, maybe – Maybe one or both fall somewhere early on the to the yeah. third round, but I think they both come off the board. So that's the top two. And Greg, you didn't really have any thoughts on those chop anything on the either of those guys. No, the next one you got listed is the one that's intriguing to me. No, no, he he, he didn't make my top five, but I dude, I, he caught my attention. Trust me on tape. Yeah. So, uh, and this is running backs once again. So today we're talking a little more running backs. I know we dived a little off topic into D tackles, which, but we did review that no tackle already. We're going to try to hammer some more positions as we're less than three weeks away from the draft. May combine a couple of them together. Um, Jalen Wright, though, is the guy I have ranked third. So 5'10, 210 pounds. Right. Speed, right? He reminds me a little of Jamal Charles. Yeah. And I mean, it's high praise. But it's, it's the upright running style. It's the overall frame. It's just, you know, I'm not saying he is Jamal Charles. I think Jamal Charles was a better pass catcher out of the backfield. He was really good at that. But Jalen Wright also is really, has been a really solid blocker. So even though he's, you know, not the biggest guy in the world at 5'10 and 210 pounds, he's been an excellent pass protector at Tennessee. And uh, Tom Justin, a friend of the, you know, who watches the show, he may, he commented, give me a running back that can play pick up the blitz. Can, can he do that? Uh, I mean, I think so. I, I was going to say the Tom Justin special, I'll just go ahead and mention it because it's a guy further. It's a day, a day three guy, but I think Kamani Vidal out of Troy. I was just so. going to say that no, guy. He's in my top five, Dale. I texted you about him. Yes. Well, Greg, you look off my draft guy. <laughs> it's and true. I, no, I, 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 I'm like, come on, Greg. Where are you getting that? I already know about these. But guys. I look at my own. I study my own, man. I know. But, but I got to you to do. You said, "Who should I watch for the show?" I'm like, "The running backs, Greg." <laughs> Greg, yeah, but what in particular? But you know what, Dale, you're like Greg. Look at the running backs. You know what? And did I? Hey, man, I did my study, man. I was texting you about him. So yeah, and that 
and and that way you can once you watch them, even just a little bit, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of time watching. Right, but you know who my main crush is, and we'll get to him soon. Yeah. Well, when I look at these running backs, I look at what you wrote down, and um, I look for the blocking. If they yes. can't block, I just scroll past them because we need blocking is what we need. You know, I agree with that too. better, and hopefully Chase Brown will be a good blocker. But we like. So you've said before, like if we switch running backs, we don't want to give away the play. So let's get the identical running back three right. times. You know what I'm saying? Um, Zach Moss. Is is somebody else is trying to bring that comment up? Not me. Must have been um, Greg. My hands are up. Hand check. <laughs> Might have just been my hands uh, a little wet there. But uh, yes. well, I would say Moss is our blitz. And that's I think Moss will fill that role kind of decent, but. You know, the more guys you can have. And Travion's still on the roster, and I think he makes the roster. I think he makes it <clears throat> for special teams and his ability to pick up the blitz and block. So I'm not like, oh, we have to have a guy that is a pass protector, honestly. But, I mean, would it surprise me if they want a guy that can do that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could see that. Well, the problem is, though, can Moss or Brown, do you trust them in <laughs> short yardage situations? <clears throat> I don't know. I think so. I mean, I don't have an issue with uh, – I think they can get it done. Chase Brown, I mean, he did everything in Illinois. We tend no, to forget that. No, and and, and Jalen Wright, man, no, no. He caught my attention too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just trying to find more lower guys. I try to look at the more lower guys in the later rounds, but Jalen Wright, man, certainly caught my attention, man. It's definitely as a patient mark. Because, like, there's times I'm like, man, this guy's got good vision. And, hey, me and Dale think alike. Maybe I should start a draft guy to my own. Yeah, you guys well, you like you share a brain. <laughs> Yeah, so no, um, I mean, I'm looking at this. I'm like, wow, Dale said exactly what I thought. He he's just now turning 21. His RAS was 9.80. If yeah. he gets a little daylight, he's gone. Like he's got probably the best like breakaway speed, explosiveness of any running back in this class, in my opinion. So that's Jay, we're like talking about Jalen Wright still, right? Yeah, we're still right, talking right. about Jalen Wright. I, I think sure we didn't skip ahead. He gets a crease, boom. You know, he could take it to the house on any play, and that's. That's something that I really like about him. Now the short yardage and the power game and the things like that that you're talking maybe you think that we need, Greg, I don't think he's going to give you that as much. Right, exactly. Because like like I say, I didn't know we were looking for in particular. I thought it was a big power back. But like you were telling me, don't bring in a guy where it looks obvious, oh, they're just going to run it up the middle or something. Try to get a guy similar to the other two if you can. Well, I just said I have no clue what they're thinking. No, we have no you, clue. Can, you can do either one. You just open up the doors more is what you say, yeah. Or if you get that kid from Michigan, you just dare him to block us. Because that dude has, like, tree trunk legs, doesn't he? Corum? I don't know. I don't no. love Corum. Well, well, we'll, we'll get to him. Let's get to the next You, you want a big guy, though? You want a power guy? We'll get right into one. Uh, All fourth right. On my board yeah. is Bra- Braylon Allen, who i seen already mentioned as well. 6'1", 235. He's still only 20 years old. He was 17 his freshman year at Wisconsin, putting up massive numbers. Um, They're known for obviously having good linemen and good running backs, and he's kind of been the next in that. Now, he's never – he had 1,200 yards. I say 1,268 yards as a true freshman, another 1,242 as a true sophomore. This year's production was down to 984 yards. He was dinged up, missed some games, a little injured. Um. The, doesn't have the best long speed being a big, powerful, bruising type guy. Obviously, you're going to think Derrick Henry, just thinking size-wise with Braylon Allen. Hey, I, I personally like Allen more, but I understand Estime had a hell of a season for Notre Dame. We're going yeah. to get to him, too. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I think Allen, sometimes he does run a little too upright, and I think just being you know 6'1", almost 6'2", that's kind of – when you have that combined with that, you're going to get chopped down a lot. He And that's one thing I put. He doesn't break as many tackles as I'd like to see him break. So with that said, I mean, he I, I like a lot of things about him, but I also have some concerns. So I'm talking like at the earliest I'd take him as pick 97. And that's that's – we're on running back four, and I'm already like, here we are. I'd rather get this guy in the fourth round. That's yeah. how I feel a lot, Greg. I think you're no. kind of saying something similar like, I think that's where you get value yeah. for these guys. No, exactly. And I know we're not desperate for one, one but, yeah. I mean, I would definitely not complain about Allen. I mean, like, if we if they want to get a short yardage guy, then well, let's do it. I'm, I'm all for it. But, you know, I'm not going to complain or anything. You know, I, I like Allen's tape. Like, but you like you said, like, and I see here, you kind of, he's been compared to Derrick Henry. Obviously, Derrick Henry's way better and all. But, yeah, I would definitely never 
See you later, Darth. I would definitely, but I would not complain about Allen at all. Yeah. I don't want a running back in the first like four rounds, like fifth round. I'm okay because I think just think that we got bigger needs. We got four running backs on on the uh, roster right now, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, but I think it opens up like, you know, especially if you really hammer your needs, having that extra third round comp pick. I always come back to that. I think that's yeah. so valuable. You know, we could, you know, yeah. theoretically, we could get an offensive tackle, a defensive tackle, a wide receiver, and an interior O lineman before we even go to the fourth round, you know, and then at that point it's like, Oh, you know, tight end. And I'm just saying it, maybe it's tight end instead of one of those, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I definitely, I'm not ruling it out, but, but I'm with you. Maybe we don't take one at all. I could see that. And I kind of said that I could see running back being the tight end position of last year. If there's not a guy that fits the value and how they, where they have him rated on their board, they're not going to force it. Yeah, not, right. with, uh, not with Moss, not with Brown, not with uh, Travion, all on this roster still. They're not going to force that. No, if they don't draft one, I'm not going to be totally surprised. Ever since well, I was for sure they're going to take tight end link last year. I mean, every, not everything's a sure thing. Yeah, this actually. That. I was going to say, gonna we say find that Keaton Mitchell. I was going to say, this seems more unlikely that we take like more likely that we don't take one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like then tight end last year, tight end. I thought we were taking one. Oh yeah. One of this wouldn't surprise me at all. If we don't take one. Absolutely. But you know, you never know. Um, next is a completely different style of back that Greg don't love, but Will Shipley out of Clemson. Dude, just explosive. And he's a phenomenal pass catcher and we pass the ball a lot and he's a good returner. So if you think about the new rules with the return man, with a guy with some speed, some shiftiness. And he produced early at Clemson, 739 yards. Then he had almost 1,200 yards. Then he kind of, you know, he missed. He, he still played in 12 games, but down to 827 yards. And he was losing carries to a younger running back last season, which is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, but I still secure. like Will Chip. Like, but yeah. yes. And that's something I – if he doesn't hang on to the football more, he's unplayable. As you know, as a return man and as a receiver, but damn, he's got flashes. But that you're going to have to hammer ball security and the fumbling and correct the fumbling issues yeah. with Will Shipley. Well, but well, I he, like him because I can see the vision with him mm-hmm. of a guy that you can just get the ball to 50, 60 pass catches in a season, and at any time he could take one to the house. No, exactly. Like when I watch the tape, I'll be maybe every. Everybody's got a different opinion. I respect that. I really didn't see the much explosiveness that I thought I would be expecting and all that on tape. And a lot of times he was running straight into, like you said, he's a little guy, but a lot of times, man, I mean, I'll give him credit. He, he's not afraid to run into coverage or any, run inside the middle or anything, but, man, that's how you lose the ball a lot of times. So. Yeah. At this point, man, I've probably watched most of these guys five, six games, if not more. Mm-hmm. Um, Shipley, probably his best game to go watch where you could see, like, Top tier talent from this season is the game versus Duke. Okay. So if you're watching versus Duke, you'll be like, Ugh. but like you said, you see flashes of that in other games, but it's not that Duke game was was special mm-hmm. and fun. So I think that one just is etched in my brain of how good he was. So maybe right. I'm higher on him than the NFL is. We'll see. Right. But he tested really Raz 9.61. So uh very twitchy, like I right. mentioned, the returnability. How much does this guy weigh? Uh, 206. I know that you put one of your cons as size and thin frame. I just, I just wondered how much you weighed. Yeah. And that's like Jalen Wright's 210, but I've got a yeah. con for him as thin frame. I mean, right. it's just the way these guys are built. You know, if you're almost six foot or if you're six one and, you know, you're not 215 to 220. And you right. can just, t- like, everybody's built a little different. So it's like when you're watching them, you can just, and it's just what I see, you know. Marshawn Lloyd's a guy who Greg likes that we're going to get to that also on tape looked like he had a thin frame, but he came in at 220 pounds, which was surprising. And I put that in the draft. Yeah. But, but next you've got a guy who's the same weight basically as Will Shipley, but he yeah. is about three, little more inches, reliable. three inches shorter. Yeah. So same, same weight, three inches shorter. So he he's plays, a lot of stock here. Blake Corum from Michigan. But he's like a big guy, you know, I mean, and like he seems more reliable. And obviously the tread on the tires, that concerns me a little bit. But one thing you wrote down that I totally saw, very patient. 
I hope he's not too patient like Joe Mixon tried to be with Le'Veon Bell or anything. But you see it sometimes, but you, yeah. But you also see him, and Joe did it too. How many? Joe was pretty good on the goal line. Yeah, but no, it, it, his rascal good. blew me away. But yeah, he plays. Yeah, I thought he played like a big guy. Yeah, obviously, great, great production and in the Big Ten. You know, he he's in my top five. You know, I I would not complain if we got him. I could see why they would get him. Marshall said, "Skinny guys need love." <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, uh, so ass, when, that's right. Marshall is he's as thin as I am big. <laughs> hey, I feel you. Uh, when you say you're out on Corum, you're not, not as out. high. I'm not I'm out. When, I'm, you, when you say you're not as high on him, what is the biggest knocks that you're talking about? It's a lot of that. He's had so many damn carries. Yeah, I don't see the explosiveness that I like to see in other guys. And if I'm if I'm going to not have the explosiveness, then I want a big ass dude like Braylon Allen. That's the right. reason that Braylon Allen is higher than him is because he's so damn big and he's only 20 years old. Where I don't know the exact age for Corum, but I know he's you know he's a fourth year senior, whereas Allen was only a three year guy, and is only point like he's one of the youngest prospects in this, probably the youngest prospect in this draft class. Honestly. Greg's asking Siri how old he is. Of course he is. Twenty three. I, I told you. So you got a guy that's going to be turning twenty four before long, compared to a guy that's twenty and a guy that's a lot bigger. And Allen. That's the reasons but, that I have him over him. But Corum, I'm not going to take away from what the, what the man did. I am an Ohio State fan. This man kicked Ohio State's ass this year. He's a dog. And even though he's not, my, in my opinion, the greatest in short yardage situations because he's not the biggest. Like Greg said, he's tough as hell, and he's gonna. He just gets the job done. I put that it. in my final thoughts. Like he gets the job done. Yeah, yeah but, and they oh. they don't win the national title. They don't even sniff the national title without Blake Corum. So he's a, he's a damn winner, and he's a damn good player. So if the Bengals ended up drafting him at pick 97, I wouldn't be, like, super upset with it. I get it. I understand it. But I would like him a lot more in the fourth round, like most of these guys I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, the, so the thing I want to say is I could get two shits about age because we're in a win-now mode. Like, you know, Chop, you and I were discussing one time, you know, just play him on that, one, that four-year contract and – you know, move on to next. Like Chop said, you were saying, Chop, we're in the win now mode. I could care less. Greg, I completely understand that. Yeah. And and for running backs, I, I understand it as well. Running backs. But, but draft evaluating, it's a piece to the puzzle. Like Exactly. I understand. No, I understand. I get that 100%. I know. I know. I'm, not, I'm not saying it. I'm more position. saying that for everybody else. No, yeah. I'm not trying to downplay you, Dale. Like, damn, I don't give a crap what you said. No, I'm just uh, saying age. Hey, I'm with you. I'm just saying in general, that's. That right. I always I try to put that because it's another piece to the puzzle, just no, like the production, right. the tape, the everything else. The <clears throat> right. but I agree, especially at running back. You know, right. rookie contract, three four years. You you don't you typically want to extend these guys after anyway. So nope. whether you're twenty or you're twenty, you know, and maybe you do get a second contract out of a twenty year old. Right. You know, maybe that's the difference, but. We want to win a Super Bowl more than anything. The Bengals exactly. are specific as well, so I'm 100% with you on that. Yeah. Now, exactly. the next guy, a lot of people love, mm. and I get it. Big, bruising son of a bitch. This is your tree trunk legs right here. And so, he this jump is the guy that has legs like, like yeah. this. Audric Estime from Notre Dame. Dude, what caught my attention, he can jump over people. I can't believe his RAS score was that low. That dude can fly over people. Which yeah, that okay. red score might help him fall down so that we can pick him in like the Yeah, no, I am not gonna complain about him at all if we got him. I mean, if we took him at 97, I wouldn't be mad. Um, just kind of similar to Corum and Allen and some of these guys, right. but once again, I would like him a lot more in the fourth round. This no, yeah. Gonna, the fourth or later, I would like a lot of these guys more. Um, obviously physical, strong build, tree trunk legs, uh He's got reliable hands, but he hasn't caught the ball a lot. That's not what he's asked to do too often, but he's shown he can do it. And, I mean, he had almost 1,350 yards this past season. So, hugely productive for Notre Dame. 18 freaking touchdowns. So, you're talking short yardage. You need a yard. That's a guy who tries to get a yard. So, if the Bengals do want a power back, even though I have Braylon Allen ranked higher for a multitude of reasons, if, if the Bengals want a pure power back that can get that yard when they need it, I think they should draft Audrey Estime in this draft. Yeah. Like, I just do. I think he's the best at doing that. 
I, I agree with you. No, no, I, I'm totally cool with that. I am not going to complain about Estime. I know he's been talked a lot. That's why he was, like I said, my top five guys. Uh, we're, we're, like the guys that were in my top five were guys I didn't like. Because Estime, we, you know, he's been talked about a lot. These are just guys that I personally had, do not know really well. But, you know, I'm like, when scouting, I'm like, man, this guy could be intriguing. But no, I will definitely not bitch if we got Estime. My brother in law, who's a diehard Notre Dame fan, told me we would not be disappointed pretty much. Yeah. And uh, Will J here is, is right on my draft guide list here. So yeah. Ray Davis, I do. What am I top five? Is next on my list. And having him this far down, I would just read to you what I put in my final thoughts on the draft guide. If this were only about tape, he'd be in the conversation for running back two or three in this class for me. But once again, the age, I know what I said. And yeah. for the Bengals, I know. But he is going to be 25. Yeah. You're talking a much older prospect that should be dominating players. That's when he really, the age, starts to factor in. This guy turned 25, playing against some guys that are out there at 17, 18, 19, right. 20 years old. You know? So, yeah, he should probably be a little better out there. But I love the state. He's phenomenal. He's been at three different schools, so Temple, Vanderbilt, and now Kentucky, where he had his best season. But even at Vanderbilt last year, he had over a thousand yards. Dude, so he's, he's done it at multiple schools. And he's produced and he can catch the ball. He's short, stocky, 5'8, 211. So he's like a little fucking bowling ball, right? In my opinion. And and he doesn't have the breakaway long speed that you like, but he's he's fast enough. And I really do think if he goes to the right situation, if he goes to a contender. I could see him making plays in the playoffs. I just can't. I can't explain it. I love Ray Davis. He's lower on the list because of the age, because of, you know, the explosiveness, the long speed isn't necessarily there. But I would just bet, and if you know anything about this kid's story, he was homeless at one point as like a wow. younger kid. Wow. Um, there's a, the Athletic has an article about, just search Ray Davis in his backstory. I'm sure you guys can find something on it. Why it's should an incredible story. He's been in now the foster system, things like that. So shout out Ray Davis. Yeah. Had to overcome a lot in his life. Um, I'm rooting for the kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how good he'll be in the NFL, but I, I really do think there's a role man, for him in the, the man NFL. This is a full, that's a man. He's 25. That's actually right. No, <laughs> so not a kid. This one's a man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, you know, Dale, the thing that caught my attention the most – First thing that caught my attention I divert, is the first thing I saw in your notes, vision. I mean, I see you see that guy run through holes and all that. I mean, he's got that vision where he can see where to go. I mean, the, I mean, and he's I agree. Really, his vision is one of the best in this class. Oh, my God. His vision was, was ridiculous. Two plays that Please. caught my attention. There was a play against Akron. It was a blown play. The Kentucky quarterback was about to get his ass sacked. He had like three or four guys getting ready to sack him. He throws it to Ray Davis. He makes his own play by running back and forth, like running around. Getting like a Geo, like Geo did against yeah. Miami, it, exactly. Like and, and another play was against Florida. Little guy he is, bulldozed a couple of Florida players to get a touchdown. Ray Davis, man. I mean, I'm not James. If you're watching this, man, I can totally understand, buddy. Yeah, you're, hey, you know, at one point I had him as like my third running back. Like I was like, I love like just based on tape only. Before any background, just watching tape on these guys. Oh my god, I'm like. I, I love yeah. this guy. You know Cincy, what I mean? Cincy James, 38 minutes is your time mark if you need a J.O. Yes, you do. If you need J.O. material, 38 no, minutes. No, 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 no. Like I said, like, like I, I, you know, the vision, man, that's just what caught – that was the one thing that caught my so attention. Is this the first guy that's on the, the big savage list? He's talk, number, that he's that number just, three. He's no, number we've three. discussed. The first one that we've discussed. Oh. Uh, Yes, he is. No, no, no. He, he, yes, he's the first one on the big stand. <laughs> okay. I have to relook. Let me see. Because yes, he is the first one. All right. Next is Bucky Irving. So 5'9", oh. 192, super small. Rass score is like a 2.16. But the man had literally 56 receptions this year. And he doesn't fumble. You think, you look at the size and you go, damn, there's – Will Shipley fumbles a lot. J Jalen Wright fumbles a lot. These guys that I got with a thin frame, they tend to fumble a lot. Bucky Irvin's the smallest of the group, and he fumbles. He's one of the people that fumbled the least per, per carries. Joe Goodberry had something on that the other day. The least per carries of the entire draft class, even though he's that small. 
So I really like Bucky Irving, and he's explosive on tape and shifty on tape, but the I don't know. The athleticism testing surprised me. Um, he's had over 1,000 yards the last two seasons, almost 1,200 this year. I like him. He's got the short area burst and agility that I like, and he breaks a ton of tackles. For a small guy, he breaks a lot of tackles, and he doesn't fumble. So he's got all that going for him. But he's not a pass blocker, so Chop, you're probably out on him too. No, yeah. I don't I mean, know why I'm this crazy looking baby. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't never changed that back. No. Now I'm talking as a crazy looking baby. You're the who day baby baby. <laughs> <laughs> but his long speed, the size, those are all concerns. So I've seen people have Bucky Ir- and I was high on Bucky Irving at one point, but man, the testing, it just scared. There's things that scare me, the size, the testing. But I think he could still be a rotational guy. But I don't know how much you can play him not pass protect. No, no, like Dale, I liked him because the name Bucky's and all that and stuff. But no, man, I'm saying, uh, you know, I, I get where you had him high, but he just he's just not my cup of tea. No, I get it, and that's it, it's more than fair. He has concerns that I could see this kid out of the league in three year concerns. Yeah. No. Uh, next one is on my list. Also, all right, just Sorry. go ahead, just go ahead. I'll let you talk about him. Say his name first because you got podcast listeners. Marshawn Lord out of USC. That just what caught my attention is, yeah, you know, like the speed he has, the the way he just fights for every yard. I mean, in Caleb Williams, there were times he was throwing it way downfield, like he was a receiver or something. I mean, obviously, I know he had a good quarterback on his team, but man, he just caught my attention a lot, man. I mean, you know, and for I, I was shocked he was only five five foot nine. I mean, he looked bigger than he does. He looks way bigger on. He plays like a big guy on tape. I was really impressed with him. His rest scores off the charts. Obviously, ball security is a concerning factor. But, man, some of the plays he just made, man, I'm like, he would do well with Joe Burrow, I thought to myself. Now, don't overlook that ball security. Let's I go know. back to you that Joe Goodberry chart. I know. I Every 36 that. touches, he has a fumble right. in his career. That's By far the worst of all the running backs on that chart. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. Now, that is terrifying. And once again, I, just watching him when I first watched him, I had no idea he was 5'9", 220. He doesn't play like that. So we were no. talking about guys like Blake Corum who are smaller that play way bigger. Well, quite the opposite with Mr. Marshawn Lloyd. He plays way smaller, but he's fast. He's quick. He's got great burst. That's good part. But no, yeah, I get that ball the, security. The ball, <laughs> the ball security, I don't see the power injury. He doesn't play like a bigger running back. He's 220. He had an ACL injury in 2020. I mean, he's played since then. It's fine transferred from South Carolina. And even this year, he split a lot of carries. He only had 116 total carries, um, 820 yards. I mean, 7.2 per because he breaks some big plays. 232 receiving yards. There's a lot to like with Lloyd. Oh, my God, we're all debating. Yeah, yeah. it's the Who Day Baby Baby Show. Oh, oh shit, what the fuck? Because the next guy on my list, I'm very excited to talk about. All right. So he's already, but that Marshawn Lloyd is one of your big savage guys. He's one of them. But this guy, you know how you just look around and this guy caught my attention. My man, Tyro Tracy, I call him Double T. Let's burn out Double T to Cincy. Oh my God, dude. I mean, this guy, five foot 11, initial burst, reliable hands, used to be a receiver. I mean, to returnability, elusiveness in the open field, only one year started running back. But I'm like, good Lord. I mean, this guy is just a natural athlete, man. I don't give a shit if he's 24. I know he needs to work on his pass blocking, but holy crap, though, man, he just impressed the hell out of me. I mean, I I will I will go nuts if we got him sometime late late day two or early day three. We can tell. You're already shirtless. Right, you already got it. your shirt. Oh, yeah, what does that tell you guys? For the mean, podcast listeners, Greg, Greg is shirtless. Greg came back with no shirt on. I mean, you, yeah. the special teams value. This guy, I think, would fit perfect in our running back committee. You know, like I say, receiving the ball. I mean, look, he needs. does he need work on pass protecting? Obviously, he does. But I think, can that be taught, Dale, in your opinion? Oh, man. It's a... Maybe I don't know. I think for him it could be because he's played receiver. Like it's just yeah. different. And he yeah no, but no no. Good. This this I mean look, everybody's got a favorite. And like he, I never heard anybody talk about him, so I don't want to be like accused of copping off of someone. But this was my favorite to yeah, Tyrone. Yeah, seven hundred. 
700 rushing yards, at, you know, his first year as a full-time starter running back. He only had 138 last year. After tra- He was four years at Iowa as a receiver. Right. Transferred to Purdue for two more years. Swise older. He's played six years. Literally, he's my Charlie Jones prospect of this draft. <laughs> Just yeah. because he's played at both Iowa and Purdue. Right. Now that's what that- Char- Charlie yeah, that's Jones true. played at Buffalo also. So this right. So let's keep it going, away. man. Let's keep it going. But he ran 9.77. Good athlete. And I think you could put him at, at kick. He could kick return. If there's going to be more returns with the new kickoff rules, I think he'd have a role there immediately. Why you see what you have with him. So if we're talking like fifth round and, and Tyron Tracy is the draft pick, I'm good with that. Hell yeah! I, I, I like him. I think he's got a lot of upside. You Dale, I'm running your house right running. now. I'll take my shirt off and we can hug shirtless right now. Man, I fucking love Touch you, nips. Dale. Touch nips. I and, fucking and, love you, man. <laughs> But I think there's a lot to work with there. I think he's only going to get better as a running back, you know. Um, he probably should have been a running back the whole time. But, you know, you're talking, obviously, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He played receiver. He had a, In 2019, that's how far this goes back. It goes back to 2018 when he his first year at Iowa. But 2019, he had uh, almost 600 receiving yards for them. So, I mean, like I mean I that, say, that's pretty impressive as a redshirt freshman. I mean, like you said, kick return. I mean, like I say – he can he can be a contributor immediately as a rookie, man, in the fifth or sixth round. That's what you want, right? He's not a yeah. good pass blocker, Greg. Uh, you don't need to pass block and kick return shop. <laughs> no, but you need to pass block when you're out there playing running back and Joe okay. Burrow's your quarterback. I, 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 shop, I totally understand what you're saying. I was like you, but, dude, I'm just too wowed by this guy, and I just think this guy could be a steal for us. You can be creative with him. But I get what you're – shop, I'm not going to argue with you. I get what you're saying. That is a concern with me, too, but – you know, it will. I get with, you. With will, I, well. Hey, will, I respect your opinion. Hey, the, I respect That's everybody. Tacky. No, Diddy. Don't turn into Diddy the Diddler. You're right. I respect okay. to what you all are saying. You, you all have a right to your own opinion. I respect. Well, they're you. talking about you being shirtless. Oh. Yeah. And wanting to hug on people. Uh, Crip saw your tat. Yes. It's Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, yeah but no, 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 but no, like I say. Believe me, the pass protection is the thing I always look into. So yes, but st- still, though, man, this kid is just really just impressed the hell out of me on tape. Uh, I, I want to talk about a ton more. We're getting into running back. Play. We'll we'll kick around. I do want to talk about Garendo though. But go ahead, Chop, before we get into. I was just going to say that I I just think that in this draft, in the position the Bengals are in, we have four running backs already on the roster. Any anybody that we if get, you're counting uh, Chris Evans, if you're counting. if you're well, I'm counting Chris Evans because for the preseason, preseason they fuck he's gonna make good, big plays in the uh, preseason and then they're not gonna they're, he'll he'll play like one or two plays the entire season and we'll wonder what the hell's going on again. But I'm just saying, going into this draft, I just think that you have to get a blocker, someone that can block, someone that at least says willing blocker on the draft guide. You know what I mean? I understand that. Uh, so, Dale, there's two more guys. Me. One guy, before I even had this list, you and I texted you about him. You liked him, too. Well, you want to talk about uh, the Louisville kid? Because I did like him, too. Yeah, six foot two twenty. originally at Wisconsin, who pumps out a bunch of running backs. Um, elite Raz, like 9.90. Oh, yeah. Um, big playability, obviously. Elite straight line speed. But he doesn't break a ton of tackles at 221. That's concerning. He plays like a smaller guy, even though he's bigger. Um Turning 24 in June, the injuries are the biggest thing with this kid. You see the explosiveness, maybe you can carve out a role for him. But, you know, being a fifth-year player, one year at Louisville, that's when he really played quite a bit as the backup to Jawar Jordan, who's also farther down this list. But I think he's a better prospect. Um, But he had recurring hamstring problems and the Liz Frank injury that he was out for most of four seasons. Like, he had injuries across four different seasons. That's very yeah. concerning. Ugh. You see the talent. You like him, but it, it's super concerning as far as the injuries. I'm not sure about him. Is this is this the next guy you're talking about, Greg? Yeah, Isaiah Davis. Yeah, no, this one, Dale, because I texted you about him. This is the time we're looking for a power guy, but he but he could do more than that, and that's what caught my attention with him is Isaiah Davis. Yeah. So from South Dakota State, played an FCS competition, but South Dakota State literally, it's like North Dakota State where Bolson came from. They right. are they they have been at least this year. I think maybe even the year before, they won the championship at least one of those two years, if not both. Right, FCS. 
So, like you said, six foot two eighteen. He's almost another guy that's two twenty. His Raz was nine point oh oh. A lot to like with him. I mean, there really is. He was at the Senior Bowl. He didn't seem out of place at the Senior Bowl. He didn't stand out, but he didn't seem out of place. You know, anytime you're taking that step up, you want to know. You want to see him in other environments. He's had a good combine. Had a decent enough Senior Bowl. I I, I think there's a lot to like with Isaiah Davis. I think if you're wanting that power guy and somebody that maybe has some high upside, you're not counting on to do a ton in year one, maybe play some special teams. Isaiah Davis wouldn't be a bad pick in the hey, fifth round as well. Dude, for a power back, and you normally you don't see power backs have great RAS scores really, but, man, his RAS score, nine, wow. Nine. I mean, that's off the charts right there. But like I say, I mean, and like if the really only concern is small school, dude, I'll take that, man. I'm very, I, I, I will take that. And so – I will definitely not be upset if we got him in like in the sixth round. Well, that school has produced a couple stars. Exactly. Yes. They got a ton, yeah. well, they got a t- South Dakota State has a ton of players in this draft. I mean, literally, they have about six, seven, eight prospects that could all either be drafted or if not, they're going to be undrafted free agent guys. Um, hugely productive. I know it's lower competition, but almost 1,600 yards this year, 50, almost 1,500 the year before. So, right. Even though it's lower competition, you still got to produce. And he did that at a high level. And when you watch him, he stands out compared to other people on the field at that level. And that's what you want to see. I certainly think he has a chance to make it in the NFL. Yeah. That's a lot of yards, man, the last two years. Oh, hell yeah, man. All right, Greg. Who else do you have that you want to talk about? So well, and, and Dale, Dale, apparently, man, you I thought you and I disagreed on a lot of things. But apparently, every time I bring up a guy way down the list, like, oh, I like that guy. And Dale, and apparently Chop likes him too. Uh, the, what, the kid out of Troy. Yes. The last guy on my list. So Kamani Vidal. Yeah. Uh, 5'8, 213. I, I like his contact balance and the experience. You know, he's been a four year starter there. And Moss um, has that too. So, yes. Over 1,100 yards last year, almost 1,700 yards this year at Troy. That is elite production 5.6 yards per carry. Um, getting almost 300 touches. So we talked about Corum, Corum having a lot of wear. If you, if you believe in that, he's another guy. So did Chase Brown. It doesn't mm-hmm. super concern me, um, especially because we're not looking for 10-year running backs like you guys talked about. That's right. You right. know, we're looking for guys that we can play on rookie contracts for a while and move on uh, after that. Hey, if we unfortunately, need. that's the way the running back position is, is going in the NFL. Use yeah, them up. One thing I like on the list, he's a good player at five foot eight. Man, he kind of reminds me of J. Brian Bernard. Bernard was a little guy, but yeah. he was not afraid to put himself in there and pass oh block. You know? and, yeah. and, and he's fine. And he's a you say he's a willing pass blocker. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's good a blocker. good. He's a good blocker. Like yes, he's not agree. just willing. He's a good. He's a good pass blocker. Right. That's why I said this is a Tom Justin supreme pass blocker guy that he wants sometime on day three. We're, we're talking probably fifth, sixth round. Um, when you could probably get this kid um, highly productive at worst, he's going to come in, help you on special teams. If you need him on third down, boom, you got a guy for third down that you can trust as a pass blocker. He will be so, a vital part of your offense. Yeah. Yeah. So in honor of Tom here. So it's like our Tom Johnson pass blocker. So vital was one. Another one was uh, uh, the kid out of uh, uh, Tennessee, right? Right. Yeah. He's a pretty good pass blocker. Yeah. So like, so like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Give me your Lots Tom. Smaller, Johnson. But- so your Tom, give me your five Tom. Do you have good like, like, I don't have fucking five off the top of my head, Greg. Okay, I got Kamani Vidal as my Tom Jetson. <laughs> if right. he wants a pass blocker, I think Kamani Vidal fits that. Okay, cool. There you, or, 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 there you go, Tom. But, yeah, no, like I said, Dale, like I said, and Tyron, I get I get what Chop says. I get what everybody else says. Not, but he just has some traits that just wow the hell out of me. But I totally get why the bang, if the Bengals would want him. But I'm just saying, man, you know, when you just watch that tape, you're like, holy shit. You know, I mean, the passing game, this guy could add you an extra weapon. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Now, he doesn't have the top end speed. Uh, the vision isn't the best always. It's not bad, but there, there's some things you watch and you go, eh. And then, obviously, catch radius and things like that due to the size aren't going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, a pass catcher, not necessarily a pass blocker I want to mention, is Blake Watson because no one hardly talks about him. So, he played at Old Dominion. Then he played at Memphis. Probably the best pure pass catcher at running back in this class. So for any team, not just necessarily Bengals, looking for that specific trait, because you start getting with some of these backs, you want you want to look for guys that can do something, at least one thing special, right? 
And I think yeah. that's what Watson can do. Yeah. He had, um, let's see, 480 receiving yards for Memphis this past season. So almost 500 receiving yards as a running back and almost 1,200 rushing yards. He's explosive. He's small, 5'9", 189. He's not real big. Um, doesn't have the, he's not going to be the power guy, the short yardage guy, but you need a guy in there uh, on third down to run you a route. He's, he's a good one and no one hardly talks about him. So I really like him. He's obviously older, six year senior, yeah. played at Old Dominion for a long time. But uh, this past year at Memphis, he produced at both places. So almost a thousand yards at Old Dominion the year before with over 300 receiving yards. And then, like I said, improved that at Memphis to almost 1,200 and almost 500. So extremely productive, big fan of him. Yeah, one guy I, I kind of watched last second. I look, you look at the University of Washington running backs, Washington and the name Dylan. Now his first name's Dylan, but still, we had a good record with the name Dylan coming from Washington. Tell me a little bit about Dylan Johnson. And there wasn't anything that wowed me too much about him, but you know what? Dylan and Washington are two good names that did well for us here. Yeah, he's just a few, he's, you know, he produced for them this year and he played through injury. Right. He was injured in the playoffs. Like, you know, he's got that dog in him, as you say, as people say. So uh, I like him. I don't love him. I don't think he's super athletic. I don't know what he can give you. Maybe he, at best, he's always going to be a, a third running back. But yeah. I'm not going to count the kid out. So as his first year at Washington, he was incredible. Helped them get to the national title game. Um, I don't know. I think he's just a guy. Okay. Reyes is 5.74. And on your cons, you got pass protection. So, 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 Chop, who's your top running back? Like, who are your top guys that you I like? like? You know what? I like Corman. I like Ray Davis. I probably like Ray Davis the most, to be honest. Oh, and I don't, yeah. because I don't care about the age, because we're going to use him for four years. 28, 29. Bye, Ray Davis. Sorry. Appreciate what you did. Anything you look at hey, he's, also, by the way, Ray Davis, you're welcome for them two or three fucking rings on your hand hey. when you're going to your next team. Then again, look at Joe Mixon, who's 28, got got three year deal. You never, you don't know anymore, man. That's yeah, what but, I'm saying. Yeah, I like I like Ray Davis. Yeah, exactly, man. No, no, no. Ray Davis. I will. I think we can all agree. It sounds like the one we can all agree on is Ray Davis, and we would not. I also him. like Will Shipley, but I think that he's going to go in around. It's too high for us. Yeah, me too. I, I just wasn't crazy about him. Yeah. And uh, this golf dad here, Dylan Labe is the best pass catcher. That him and Blake Watson. Blake Watson. The, Dylan Labe got gets talked about a lot more. He was at the Senior Bowl, things like that. But yeah, you could say. I mean, you could definitely say a guy who put up up almost 300 receiving yards against Central Michigan could be the best receiver. In one game, almost 300 receiving yards in one game. Jesus Christ. Incredible. And that was the best level that they faced. He's a kid out of New Hampshire. so And he also could provide some kick return ability. So Labe is another guy to mention. Uh, I'll mention a couple more before we get out of here. Uh, Rasheen Ali, who was at the Senior Bowl, playing really well from Marshall. Um, he's had some things where he didn't play for a while last year. So he only played in three total games. This past year, though, he was back and had over 1,100 yards. But his sophomore season, or redshirt freshman season probably, had over 1,400 yards for Marshall. And he was impressing a lot at the Senior Bowl during one day of practice is the problem. He tore a bicep. So uh, we don't know what he would have been able to do the rest of the week. Maybe he would have shot up this board more. But I know, uh, man, the name's escaping me, but the guy who runs the Senior Bowl, I'm sure somebody in the chat will have it. Um, He's super high on him, even that one day of practice. And they scout these guys, right, for who they're inviting to the Senior Bowl. So he he had a lot of good things to say about Rasheed Ali. So I definitely think he's at least a name to keep an eye on. And maybe the Bengals will have him in with their local pro day, being Marshall player. I'm not sure if that fits that criteria or not, but I would think it would. It's uh, pretty close. So I just think he, he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on. I mean, he was running some really damn good routes at the Senior Bowl on that day of practice. Um, there's some clips out there of that. Check it out. Yeah, appreciate that. Kendall yeah. Milton's a guy you liked. You took him off your yeah. thing already, Greg? No, what I mean, that was, that was, that, no, so here, let me, let me go back to Kendall Milton. No, no, no. I, I'm not ignoring you, Kendall. And I you saw the him. size and you got excited. 6'2", 225. Then you saw the production and you go, why didn't he produce more? Right, no, exactly. Here's the thing about him. 
He's got tread on the tires. He was he he was a two. I that was at the time I was just looking at power guys because I thought we were looking for a power guy. But then he I kind don't, of he don't really have tread on the tires being a Georgia. No, no, that's the thing. He does not have tread on the tires. That's what I like about him. But if we're I, I just thought of him as just only a power guy. But I'm like, hey, maybe we try to look for a guy similar to the two other running backs. No, I am not. Kendall no Milton, you could get him drafted. He's not even on pro football focus as an option to draft. And I think he gets drafted. I think he goes in the sixth or seventh still. No, he, so, no, in the Bengals did visit with him too so not a 30 visit but they did talk to him though with yeah uh K- kp from kc fought yeah he's uh he's like four or five i think he might have been five on my list i can't remember exactly off the top of my head i think it, i think he was five yeah because i have Sheffield at four but yeah we talked about alan already i like alan a lot if you wanted to power back i think him and estime are the guys you look at and alan's only 20 years old there's a lot to like there uh we talked about him we talked about a boatload of running backs this episode. Yeah. It is up on YouTube yeah. for anybody who missed the start of it, wants to go back and watch it. We always appreciate that. Like, subscribe. Podcast form, all the forms, Midwest Best Barbecue, 50 West, all the things. The draft the draft hat, too. The, the Cincy the uh, Project Game Day Eclipse draft hat. If you want to get this hat, the first one, time you can get it is a 426 later this month. Midwest Best Barbecue is going to be hosting the Project Game Day draft party on day two of the draft. And from five to seven, Cincy Hat's going to be set up there selling these hats the first time you can get them because you ain't fucking me. Well, you could be fucking me. I wouldn't mind. I give it up on the first date. But if you want the hat, come up there, man. Midwest Best. Corey Dillon's going to be there. So, well, I don't know when exactly he'll get there, so I don't want to make any promises. If you bought a ticket for the draft event, which is sold right. out because there's only so many spots, um, we did try to advertise that quite a bit. I went to scout it yesterday to scout the place again. You know, not for the G Funk wings. I went there just to look and scout. Had no, G Funk wings while I was there the and G-Funk. mac and cheese. I forced myself, forced myself to have G Funk wings and mac and cheese. Damn, um, but it's ready. They got that place ready for us. But five to seven, open to everybody. That's when Cincy Hat will be selling these and a bunch of other favorites. Maybe even a special Cincinnati Reds hat. I was told. It's a, it's a rumor out there. I don't. I, I mean, that's that's what, that's what was out there. So. Yep. Just saying. My, you know, ever know if uh, Ellie Daylight Cruz is going to stop by? Look, Crip. I didn't even have to say it. It was right that's there. Right. There you Will, go. Will did it for me. Yeah. Thanks, Will, for hooking him up. I personally like. I'm a go Tiger guy. I don't know how many high state players get drafted this year. I mean, Michael Hall is definitely a pretty good defensive tackle for a high state. And we'll talk Kate Stover, tight end. There's some guys, but not a ton because a whole bunch of their guys that draft eligible that would have went high all went back to school. So Ryan Day's on the hot seat, in my opinion, because all these guys went back to school. And I'm still not sure if they got is that Will Howard, I mean, is the transfer. Julian Sayan, Aaron Nolan, true freshman. Uh, they still got Devin Brown and Lincoln Ken Holst back. I know you wanted to talk about a high state crib. So You're right. I gave you that. Yeah. So we'll see if Will Howard's our starter. He's a transfer from Kansas State. But I'll tell you who's impressing in spring ball. Jeremiah freaking Smith, boys. That's a name to keep an eye on here in three years from now in the draft because that kid is going to be amazing. He was the number one recruit per ESPN coming into this season. He's out there, man. Ohio State's posting these highlights. This kid just – and they're going what from Marvin Harrison to this wide receiver. Stacked. He's he good. was the number one wide receiver recruit? He was the number one overall recruit for all positions per ESPN. Man, I swear to God, I thought that LSU got the number one wide receiver recruit and running back. And what else was it? No, you just think that every year. But Jer- pretty, I promise pretty, you, Jeremiah Smith is that is is him. He'll probably get in the portal though and come to a good team down south. And I believe Will said Julio. No, he did. He almost went to Miami. They were trying to offer him a big ass bag around. Simon. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. Now these colleges can offer these kids money. Hey, good for them too because yeah. these kids that go to college and get hurt and the universities make all this money off of them. Good for them to finally get what they – it's them. Yeah. It's their yeah, body. Because, man, the TV deals, the, all these oh, yeah. conferences, they're all making money. 
Well, you hear the coaches say, yeah, players shouldn't get paid by the coaches are making millions of dollars off their players performing for them. And I'm not knocking on the coaches or anything, but I mean, that I, I, it, that just wasn't right. You're like, you know, like you look at Caitlin Clark. I am so happy she's getting paid because she's brought in so much money. They're like, not even football, just basketball, like, you know, other sports. Yeah. Like, she they're bringing in any football money, money no. But you hey, know, I actually favorite? did hey. my. My senior seminar in college several years ago, I'm not going to say how many, on this on that very topic about whether pay, players should be paid. So you're talking a 20-page report that I had to do. Um, yeah, I was like, I need something that I want to talk about, you know? So I did it on sports. Yep. <laughs> Talked yeah, about man. that. And it, uh, to me, because there was kids, like, you looked into, okay, there was kids who were walk-ons. <laughs> And they're having to work like full time jobs while going to college, while playing on the football team to make ends meet to be there. And it's yep. like, well, all these universities and stuff are profiting. So I definitely now it's a little bit of the wild west. I think there's probably going to have to be some regulations, but sure, I, I'm That's all so for it as well. I'm well, I'll give you an it. example. AJ Green, a red flag for him coming out of college was because he had a jersey that was given to him, like his game used Georgia jersey from a game, and he sold it and got suspended. Like, oh, this is a red flag right here. I'm like. I don't see that as a red flag. The guy's trying to make some money. He has no money in college. And if it was given to him, he has the right to sell it. Now, I got the rule at the time, but to me, that was bullshit. Or you look at Johnny Mansell, who accumulated – well, he he admitted he was getting millions of dollars under the table, but I could care less if he was because uh, he deserved it. Uh, he deserved that. But like you said, making all that money for, for those colleges, they absolutely should be paid. Yeah. I agree. All yeah. right, man. Fun show. We'll be back on Friday. Uh, uh, dancing. May just set the topic as a, another position because we're getting so close to the draft. Uh, by the time we're on Friday, we'll be less than two weeks from the draft and two weeks exactly from the draft event on Friday the 26th at Midwest Best. So I'm going to try to, you know, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll roll with, I know cornerback has a ton of prospects, but I'm not, I'm telling you, man, after the first two rounds, I don't necessarily love a lot of the cornerback prospects. So yeah. maybe we just hammer the first couple round cornerbacks and then move to tight ends. Okay. Maybe maybe combine those two positions yeah. and uh, hammer a couple positions that way, you know, because we still want to talk about wide receiver. Maybe we do that next Monday. Yeah. And uh, you never know. You never know. Could have a guest in there. Could do a special special mock draft edition where we're trying to draft the full first round, full first two rounds, just Ooh. to see how it would play out for not only the Bengals, but every team. So I'd like to at least do at least something like that at one of these points. And then some other mock draft fun. So Friday, we'll definitely come back, hammer more of the draft talk, do some fun stuff, watch Greg dance, all the good stuff on Friday. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, like, and subscribe. Uh, Chop will send you nudes if you send us. I will.